the words, like the letters. What about the words? No, I mean, the letters are like Pi B. It's like Suns 8 or Ariel 12. So it's not like it's just a very small wording. Oh, got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. 218 pages would have been probably 100. Got Okay. Oh, I see what you're saying. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I think he made this definitely to be a quick read, you know. Yeah, but we can go ahead and jump into it. Uh, good morning, good afternoon. I got my sister, Ms. Legros, with me every other Sunday, coming through with the book review of Uncomfortable Conversations with a Black Man by uh, Emmanuel. Is it Achu? I said it correctly. Achu? I think so it's Acho, yeah. Yeah, yeah, Acho. And um this brother man is a educated NFL superstar, sports commentator, um, has a nice little hairline. And you know, he wrote a book, you know, about <laughs> you know, about race, culture, everything that's happening now. I feel like cause he cause did you listen to the did you uh read the foreword at the beginning? Oh yeah, 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 I did. Yeah, and he was talking about, I thought he was going to, I thought, because when I first heard the foreword, I was, like, really, really excited. I thought he was going to, like, pretty much kind of talk about that duality of him being uh, he's Nigerian-American, right? Yeah. To growing up in, like, a all-white environment, to going to college. Like, I thought the whole book was going to be about that. And so I was like, okay, that's pretty interesting, right? And then... He ends up going into just like the alphabets of racism, and I thought that was pretty, you know, good, you know. But uh, it wasn't for me. But I know who this is for, so that's why I would say that I really, really would recommend this book. You know, for anyone who, you know, hasn't. I feel like this is a, you know, critical race theory. You know, you heard that word before. Well, there, that's actually like a buzzword now because they're trying to get rid of it. They're trying to outlaw it here. Uh, okay. so yeah, certain legislators legislators are trying to outlaw it because they're saying that it's reverse racism. And I would say that this book is like a like a very uh, mainstream anti race book for your just common layman, white man, white person, or you know any other person who don't who don't understand like race issues going on in America. I think this is a really good introduction to all those various topics within like a short snapshot. What do you think? Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, I agree. I think it is a quick guide to, for all of uh, Americans that they have felt like, okay, let me double check what I'm doing wrong or what I can do better after Black Lives Matter movement that happened in 2020. I think um, that was the purpose is like provide a tool so you don't have an excuse anymore about like, um, you didn't know. There are like a lot of um, books that they are being created to help you to check your privilege and try to like become like, you know, more understanding and empathy and a better ally that is needed um, at this moment. So um, yeah. I, I like, the book is not for me because there are a lot of things that I'm like, eh, and, I would tell you later, like there were there was one thing I'm like, no, again. Uh, but it was very interesting to see like how he broke it into like, you know, like a few notes that they are very easy to pick and not that type of book. It's not like a deep analytical no, I mean, like, it's not that much of an effort for people to become better. It's, this is like a very, you know standard if you follow this guy everything will be better for everybody yeah yeah absolutely i feel like this is just the intro like i think it's just like the if you've never ever you know experienced or understood these i feel like this is like an intro i also think it's a good thing for kids to read i can see high schoolers mm -hmm. definitely reading this and getting like a like a really good layman fundamental understanding of race theory and racism I created another version for young people of this book oh you did yeah 
Interesting. So, okay. Mm -hmm. So just to kind of bring context, so the way that he has the book, he has it uh, pretty much where he is taking his YouTube series, where I guess he verbalizes pretty much everything that he wrote about in the book. And he takes the questions that he got from his fans and he starts each chapter off with that question. Um, and he elaborates on that. So he has one called The Name Game. And he starts talking about the difference between being Black and African American and how, you know, certain, you know, cultures, you know, they may, they may not know the difference, right? Um, mm -hmm. And therefore, they, you know, they can segregate themselves because of that. He talks about implicit biases, white privilege, cultural post appropriation. He brought up Kim Kardashian, you know, as an example, which was very funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. You know, and then the last part, he talks about the N-word, right? And he, uh, you know, literally says, like, you should never use the N-word because he, he brings up the, um, the situation that happened with the, the rye receiver who, you know, pretty much said a racist slur. And he, he brings that perspective as an NFL star in working with those people. So I, I, thought, I think that's really dope. Again, there's a lot of NFL stars who, you know, do a lot of social, you know, social uh, advocacy. A lot of them, are, some of them are authors, and they, you know, really, really try to not say kill the stereotype that they get put in because it is what it is. But they definitely do put their foot forward, and I do appreciate the effort from yeah. the brother, man. I feel like uh, one of the things that was interesting for me is when he's talking um, on the. F so we're analyzing right now part one, mm -hmm. and it's like divided in six chapters. But one of them it is regarding uh, black or African American. What is the right terminology? And I think like that is very interesting because we are reading these in the context of America. Um, I think if we're talking to someone that it is in the African continent, they probably don't want to be referred as black. They would yeah. like to be referred as Nigerian or um, regarding their tribe. And I think that those are like things that he just went through the surface. Yeah. Absolutely. He just did like a quick snapshot of like what is happening. But the terminology, he mentioned himself like he is Nigerian American. Uh, other thing that is interesting is that his family never suffer Jim Crow right. or never suffer like a slavery because he is coming from the continent. Uh, maybe he has relatives that they were like uh, enslaved uh, here, we don't know, but he has no, like he comes a time in the history of America that he has passed a lot of things that are uh, black American is actually struggling with. I think like he didn't touch that. He, I will appreciate if he touched that a little bit more because when he's explaining that is not his pain, he has never suffered the consequences, you know, of like all these stages. And for white American, they may don't understand. He do um, clarifies that he's coming from uh, a uh, place of privilege and he's coming from a uh, middle class family. But he may, I would have appreciated, like he is middle class family because his family are immigrants and they came with a set of tools that black American doesn't have. So that was like something that for me was missing in the context. Yeah. It's yeah. not the same. So do you think when he says, like, let's get uncomfortable, do you think that's really uncomfortable? Yeah, like, he should have, and I do appreciate what he is doing, but he should, like, if we're teaching and we are being humble, I think like he should have put himself on, like, okay, this is what happened. I have not suffered this. Jim Crow has not been applied to my family at all. You know, and it's the same thing, like I'm coming from an enslaved community uh, myself. I'm coming from Haiti. Yeah. I have suffered things that people in the country know me, like my family has suffered, my family tree, my, you know, my ancestors has suffered things that they are not applicable in, in Africa. Africa, Africa has suffered like colonialism that happened later. 
yeah. and there are a lot of like pain and you know um, consequences from that era. But when you are coming teaching what is happening in Black America and how you can be a better ally, I think he's also an ally for Black America. Yeah. Even though national, you know, nationality wise, he is a Black American. Mm -hmm. uh, but he mentioned he's Nigerian American. You already have the privilege of having an entity, um, identity, and we talked about that in the previous book. You have the identity. The same thing, I do have an identity because I was able, my family was able to live in Haiti that it was a free republic. Right. But then if you go to your own uh, family tree, you see like probably as a black American that Sorry. all your family members have suffered from the racist uh, uh, policies that had been applied. And the thing about Haiti is that you all got independence, which is very important. You know, having independence is very important. We were able to retain the identity. However, we were punished in another way. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. You know? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And so just to read, he said, I had my own journey. Growing up at home, I felt Nigerian because that's what my family was out in the world. I felt black because I knew that is how the rest of the world saw me. I knew this despite the fact that, as I said in the intro, I wasn't even sure if I was even black, what even black meant. Like, you know, was I black enough to listen to R&B instead of Lil Wayne or Nas? Whatever I doubt, doubted about specifics, my skin color made me a lifetime member of the club. Yeah. Yeah, so he's still learning, absolutely. Um, and it's good that, you know, he is uh, reflecting on these things and he is educating himself because he, he does some really great references, like he references W.B. Du Bois, talks about uh, NAACP and the Black Lives Matter movement. So again, you know, I would definitely, this book is a really good intro to just like a very level one version of critical race theory because you're understanding just like you know just how racism is the the the, the criticality of it and mm -hmm. talks about uncomfortable topics that i feel are really uncomfortable for you know people that you know that don't look like us right um what's the word i'm looking for okay so like um what happened like with kamala harris and tim scott so tim scott you know he got up saying that racism you know rape America wasn't a racist country, right? And mm -hmm. uh, Kamala Harris, he, she was asked the same thing, and she agreed, but she gave a different context, right? And so the crit critique of the two, right, that it's a false equivalency, right? But they were saying that, you know, Kamala said that because, you know, she also has white constituents as well, right? She's not just, uh, you know, a Black American's pres vice president. She's also everyone's president. And so she has to be mindful and be strategic with how she says things and not fall for the okie doke. Tim Scott, however, he actually has a conglomerate of people that actually believe that racism doesn't exist. And they're doing that specifically to not get stuff done, you know? And I think that's why critical race theory is so important, but you have people literally that are outlawing. If you just look it up, look up critical race theory in the last couple of weeks in the United States. You have people that are like going to legislators saying that I don't want, I'm not racist just because I don't want my child to learn critical race theory, you know? But the person was like, yeah, you are, you know, because it's, just, it's, 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 it's something that he says in the book, he said that, you know, white supremacy affects you and you contribute from it whether you even know it. Um, yeah. And if you perpetuate it and you don't do nothing about it, you know, you're literally, you know, your factor in it. And I think this, these types of books are needed, right? Like White Fragility, he references that book. Um, I haven't seen that book, but I've heard about it, right? And how to be anti-racist, right? Like our consciousness has already been there. I felt for the last couple years and a lot of people are waking up, you know, and just people need different type of tools to help guide them to start that journey, right? The part that um, in the book, every chapter, he has one part called Lest Rewind. So he can provide it context. I think like that was very smart because a lot of people, and it's not only white America, it happens everywhere. They forget about the consequences of like 
you know, different policies or like the context, like what is happening. They kind of feel like we went to z from zero to a hundred like this. And you're like, well, and what happened here? And what happened, you know, yeah. they don't get it. So I think it was very, very good that he added the let's rewind and provides like a very good context. So that was like very smart. Yeah, uh, absolutely. I think, yeah, and the other part, implicit bias. Mm -hmm. It was very clever how he mentioned like, what does that mean? Like, you don't need to be racist. You can be subconsciously biased and the outcome of people and like, you know, people is going to be a victim of that subconscious bias if you are not on check. We all have subconscious bias. We all do. Like this is not only for like one part of the world. We all do. However, the difference is the power that you have with that subconscious bias. Yeah. That is a whole thing. The example of like when he he was mentioning like people who applies to, for words that sometimes they have to change their name to be more like white sounding. So they make sure that they are able to go ahead and you know to be accepted yeah that is hard because i have a lot of nigerian friends and most of them they change their, their name wow most of them do. um wow. and people doesn't obviously they don't understand you know they don't understand what you have to do in order to survive or to be successful how you have to tone down your blackness or like your heritage so people that can see you as a threat and they are providing you equal opportunities. And, and let's go ahead and read it where it says, let's get uncomfortable for that. So he says, what are your implicit biases of against black people or people of other races? How have those biases played out in your decision-making and how you treat people? Um, you know, that, that's, that's really deep. Um, and then he goes and says, he says, I'm not sure talking about these things is uncomfortable for many of you, especially for those of you who believe yourself to be good people, who don't consider yourself to be racist, who want to treat people fairly, but all but that's all the more reason to discuss your biases, to learn about them, critique them, to try to trace where they come from. I like to use the acronym denial, don't even know I am lying. The first way to end racism is for my white counterparts to get out of denial, to understand that, wait a second, Maybe you've been lying to yourself about the existence of racism the whole time. Like, again, you know, so it's, it's really simplistic, you know, uh, antidotes to, you know, understand these topics. Now, I can, I can give really uh, credit. I can give credit for that. Yeah, it, it's interesting because yesterday something happened to me. I went to an, uh, an appointment and then it was one guy who was like delivering food. You knock at the door and right now the policy is that you cannot open the door you have to like can be only one person in this establishment and i was there the girl at reception she was like attending me and she was like getting a little bit of like she was looking for the next time slot so she was like kind of focused so the guy knock at the door she said like one second she could have just like go open the door get the food and that's it well the guy leaves comes back in he said like he knocked at the door again and he was very educated like he didn't say anything word. and she opened the door and she was like you don't see it like i'm working like i'm doing my job too like can you wait a second daddy, daddy, daddy? you can tell the color was who in you know like the receptionist was white and the guy was dark skin i was there like wow and she came back, she said, like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. Like, I really feel like, oh my God, like he could have weighed. And I'm like, no, he couldn't. He didn't have to. Yeah. So I saw subconscious bias. I don't know how far it will go to racism because it's difficult for to address in one second. But I'm like, I did, and, you know, and I appreciate this book because I felt I kind of be teaching everybody on the street how to treat black people or like how to treat anybody of like any minority. But it really 
feel like a lot of weight in our shoulders. So I appreciate that he took the time to write a book for people who at least they have the curiosity. Um, but you are in a situation where you, you, you don't want to go into a fight. You know, you don't want to be like in an argument with someone. But at the same time, I felt guilty because I could have said something, but I chose not to right. because I felt myself very uncomfortable. The guy didn't care. You know, he left and he was like, yeah, you're crazy. And that's it. But me being in the middle at that point, I'm like, you never know when you have to act. How, at what, what point, like, should I have acted or I shouldn't? I should, like, let it go. I should let it pass. It yeah. is hard. It is hard. It's very hard. And that's why he talks about it, like, you know, because he referenced the pandemic, right? But then he compares it to, like, another virus, which is, like, racism. You know, and we've been experiencing this forever. Um, and we don't even know it, you know? So, and it's been longer, it's been longer, it's been here longer than the pandemic, right? And so that dynamic is just, yeah, because you're seeing, it's, and that, it shows just how powerful white support, or just, you know, implicit biases, the dynamic, right? Because you can see it from the person's lens, you can see it from the guy's lens, you can see the injustice, right? And you can see the unconsciousness of it. Mm -hmm. And how even if you're unconscious, it's still just as like hurtful. And even for you, right, you feel guilty, right? You feel guilty because you felt like maybe you could have been a little bit more, you know, active, right? And that's real on many different levels, in many different contexts, in many different situations, you know. Um, yeah, he says, instead of being colorblind, be introspective. And I think that's a great example of like what you were doing. You were being very introspective and like understanding, like the seeing that dynamic. I think mm -hmm. our issues is, I mean, I was watching, a, uh, it was like a post and it was a, it was like a, it was some type of park or something like that. And they had, it was like an anti-racist message on there. And okay. it was a message for white people. And it said literally, you know, white people, when you enter this when you enter this environment, decenter yourself. That's the first thing it said. And the guy, when he posted it, he was like, kind of like, oh hell no, I'm never going to this place because they said I can't go. And then I commented, I was like, keyword, decenter yourself. <laughs> you know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, I feel like in order for us to understand like implicit biases, we definitely have to decenter ourselves and have a sense of introspection um, and, then, and, then, and then analyze, right? It's so, it's so, it's a lot, man. It's a lot. It's a lot. It's a lot because you, you know, you, you navigate life with that backpack full of like, of like becoming a target any moment, any time without like having any context. It's just like the color of the skin is just enough for you to become a target. You don't have to, and it's like so many levels. It is worse if you are like someone who is poor, the poorest you are, it gets worse because no one is going to help you. No one, yeah. no one cares. And I think it's very difficult to see that behavior around us and having to like, having to start like, looking a straight line saying like okay well i have to focus this is not my battle i cannot protect everybody i cannot teach everybody it creates a lot of weight you know in on us because you witness that but you cannot be fixing everything yeah um yeah. that is something like we don't really talk about a lot in terms of like the community but we do we, we have to deal with that all the time how many times at work I have heard something that is racist or like subconsciously it is negative for like any minority, but you don't say anything. You shut up and just like let it slide because you have to pick your battles. So that's interesting. I hope like a lot of people learn. What'd you say? No, I said I hope a lot of people learn from this book. I mean, it's a bestseller. I looked it up on Amazon. A lot of people like it. So, and when I posted but it, I hope we are not the bestsellers. 
<laughs> the best buyers. <laughs> I, hope, I hope it goes in the right hands. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. You know, um, and also, again, this could be just your introduction, right? You know, books, like, I feel like books should come in, like, packages. Like, after you read this book, then read this book, which is on, like, a different level. Then read this book on another level, right? But the theme, right, the theme is kind of, like, the same, you know? Um, so, like, let's talk about white privilege. So, I'm interested to know, like, you know, so being in the UK, and I've, had, I've heard you say, you know, like, the, the level that U.S. is at with their, like, critical race consciousness is just a little bit different, right? So, I'm yeah. curious to know, and you just, you just said it, like, you know, sometimes, you know, in the workplace, you can hear, you know, certain things that are, like, you know, racially insensitive. Just kind of like maybe you talk about that. Like, what is that white privilege dynamic like uh, in the UK? Is it more based on color or is it more class? Like, what, just talk about it's that. A, it's get, get it close, yeah, it's a very close combination. And I think, um, as I mentioned before, um, the UK or Europe, talking about race is quite taboo. So in the States, you guys talk about race all the time, every day. That is, you know, for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, you have any racial conversation or topic. Here, it is a, a little comment here or there. They are not ready to have a tough conversation. They are not ready to be accountable of like, this was made by you and benefited you and your grand grand granddaughter and your grand grand grandson and all this is becoming because your atrocities what you did in other parts of the world they are not ready for that you know they kind of and this is not a long time ago like for example nigeria has been uh, a free country they got the independence like 60 years ago yeah. i'm sure like you know m my mom is 60 years so yeah that's not a long time ago and in the history of a, of a country or like in hundreds of years of like what where we have seen like um a, a racial fight that's yesterday 60 years ago it is yesterday right but they are already in uh white privilege right now like in corporate britain there is a lot of conversations going on why because even though um Black, the black community is a, a minority, there is still some power. But if you go to other countries, you will see people, some protests here and there, but there, um, there is not a disclosure. People doesn't provide. So a lot of times when you re register for anything in the US, you have to say, what is your race? For like almost everything. Really? In any type of application for like education purposes um, right. like a school um if you go to the doctors every in europe that is not happening really so even though the population of like the black population in europe is quite low if you compare it with the u.s brazil or like probably canada is higher um there is still all the disparities they are not collected so a lot of people think that white white privilege that doesn't exist and it's not applicable because it's a majority and it's like the normal wow. here in the uk um i have been living here for 10 years and only now i have seen like a strong push from part of like white britain uh having a conversation regarding race because between us we all had a, a conversation about about race because it's it is part of our education or like our history growing up experience but for white britain that that is i think it is new so white privilege like and that is the same thing if you call someone racist they will be offended yeah even though they a racist thing but that is the worst thing you can tell them but at the same time, and that is the, the part that is so hard, it's like, at the same time, they cannot put together their actions with the word racist. They will always find a way of saying like, no, that, that wasn't racist. Absolutely. 
you know. So, yeah, it is, I think it's very painful because the worst thing for a victim of racism or like a subconscious bias is to be neglected in terms yeah. of like our pain not to be recognized as such. Yeah. That is, that's the worst thing. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's the, that's the main thing I would say, right? That's why we're saying mm -hmm. Black Lives Matter. You know, it's like a shout to let you know, like, you're not listening to us, man. So we're going to just keep saying it until you recognize the humanity and what we're saying. Um, and what was the name of the news anchor that uh, left the stage? What was his name? What's his name? Oh, Pierce Morgan. Yeah, Pierce Morgan. So like, even like when, when Megan pretty much said that the, uh, the monarch was, you know, they had, you know, systems of racism or she experienced that. Yeah. Even even him, who has who's very racially insensitive, pushes a huge right wing uh, ideology that is rooted in dogma and misinformation. He was like he was he was appalled, right? He was he was offended, right? And, and I'm sorry, what did you say? He threw a tantrum. He was like, yeah. "How will he?" Right, and that's what they do, right? When you're like, because you, right now, like, you have like legislators fighting with each other because they'll say something that's like this uh, guy called another kid buckwheat. He called the dude buckwheat, right? You saw that? Yeah, I saw that. Right, you know, and the dude literally like started like, yeah, you started like yelling at him. And then the guy instantly was like, why are you yelling at me? Why are you yelling at me? Like, you're like gaslighting him, you know? It's like, so that's what I'm going to ask you. Do you think it's a lot of gaslighting? Like, are they intentionally, like, not tracking this, this data so they can get the, you know, the research behind it so they can prove it and then do something about it? Or is it, like, an intentional thing, you feel? I, I think there is so much fear to fix that problem. Because you could say, listen, I have... I'm sorry, I did this wrong, you know, and, but they don't want to fix the problem. Like that is, that, that's my issue. Yeah. You have tools, you know, you have like racial motivated crimes, barely goes reflected in numbers. Intentionally, they don't want to fix the problem. And they have, for example, the problem with the police that they are covering up a lot of hate crimes, even though they are not committed by them, but they are not leveling uh, the crime as a hate crime. They right. are not collecting the right data. Right. And it goes, it goes in all ways. Like, uh, I saw, you saw a man who like stabbed two um, Asian women that they were waiting for a bus or something. You talking about recently? Yeah, 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 yeah. Where? I don't know what city, oh, it, no, but no. it was new. No, I didn't hear about so that. It was a black man that all of a sudden went and like stopped two women. It seemed that it was a random attack. Now, if it is a random attack to two Asian women, and you are not Asian, why that is not categorized as a hate crime? This is the, the problem is that people is not going to tell you I hate black people because they are black. A lot of them they do, but a lot of them they don't. You got it? Yeah, it says San Francisco. Yeah. And, and that is, and it goes like all, every way. This is not only a white um, issue. I believe that black people can be racist towards other minorities. Yes, we can. Mm -hmm. As and soon as we have a little bit of power. Facebook. Yeah. So, and those are the things that we are not ready to have a conversation. So I cannot expect a majority to accept the accountability of like being racist when be, among us in our own community, there is people trying to cover up, saying like, no, we're not racist. Yes, you can. There is Asian people right now that had been attacked by black people and by other groups. But the black people that are attacking, they're racist. And it's okay, we can deal with that. But you covering up, that is not gonna work. And it's the same thing, like we have been talking all the time, like we cannot go from left to right, you know, like to be an extremist saying like, all white people are bad. 
or that's not we will never be able to heal yeah i mean yeah jane elliott says that we get so caught up in the the color thing we don't recognize that we're human and you know yeah. and, and she says like you know until we, well, once we get out of this color thing like it just keep because we understand we we understand what we mean when we say that but people actually take it literally right they'll say right. Like, white is equal to the quote-unquote devil you know or the opposite will say black is quote unquote to whatever negative stereotype, right? Like they'll, they'll treat it like they'll believe it, you know? And, and she's like, she says, that is the problem. Like we, we can't, we can't do the same thing that they're doing to us. Right. And, and like kind of mentioned to what you're saying, like that xenophobia, which is a product of racism as well. You know, it doesn't, you can't be pro-black and be xenophobic. It doesn't, it doesn't make sense. Like it just doesn't make sense at all. Um, and, and yeah, so I would say, yeah. So like everybody's, you know, we have to be, we have to, we have to be fair on all ends and not be hypocritical, you know? And yeah. I think that's why critical race theory is important because it is uncomfortable, right? And that's the whole topic of this book, being uncomfortable. But with that uncomfortable, I mean, they think about, I remember you telling me about like your lineage and how it was connected to something that you weren't proud of. I bet that was like something that was like uncomfortable for you, right? A hundred percent. It's very uncomfortable. Even when I do understand that I have light skin privilege, I embrace it because I'm not going to take it away. Everybody has their own privilege, mm -hmm. but it is uncomfortable if it is based on other people's struggle or like the opportunities are not being provided fairly. No, you know, and when, if I am in a situation where I'm getting uh, light skin privilege towards someone who is dark skin and we are in the same room, I'm going to make sure that I provide that, uh, you know, I, I help the other person to level up the situation because it is not cool like we have to and that is like what i like about these conversations is like this is a learning journey for everybody we have learned a lot about certain things but we still have to grow um it doesn't stop here so yeah us having this conversation it's it only going to benefit us as well absolutely absolutely and so he talks about cultural appropriation, um, and he mentions this in the book, um, you know, about Karens. And again, you know, it's just, it's a lot of modern day topics that he references. And he just, it's just yeah, it was like a lot of things were like dated in 2020. So I yeah. was like, when this guy printed the book? <laughs> he, he took advantage. He's, he got that COVID. Yeah. Yeah, that COVID uh, time, you know what I'm saying? Um, yeah. You say, I want to leave you with this. If you see a black man and he's angry, obviously don't assume he's angry because he's black, but also don't assume he's even angry at anything racism related in that moment. Moment. Let people have emotions. Let see him as an individual. And I feel like that is very interesting. For example, when we see a lot of um, videos of like um, black people in America interacting with the police, yeah, people need to understand this is not the first time that they have been stopped. Yeah, I have never been stopped only at the airports because that's what happens when you are black in any airport. Uh, but I have never been stopped in the street. Now, most of like my black friends in the uk they have been stopped at one point yeah uh, probably i've had a gun pulled out on them or gotten pulled over and 50 cop cars showed up or asked if you got weapons or drugs in the car every time you get pulled you know it's just like harassment it is and when you are being stopped or like questioned about a petty thing or you are being treated uh, you know, unfairly or differently from other white bystanders around you, it is normal that you are going to be perceived as an angry person because you are angry and rightly so. Why you are stopping me? Why you are not stopping that person? Why you are like, checking my back twice? Why you are like going through my hair? 
right. why everybody else is passing and you're asking me my passport twice. Yeah. Why are you putting me like around like the other room? That happened all the time. So what? It's good to be cool all the time and be like, oh yes, officer, here you go. Check this. No worries. I try to do that like 99%. But probably one day I won't be that cool and I will be upset. Especially if I have like children around or like they are talking to like uh, someone else, it will be hurtful. Yeah. Absolutely. So people don't understand where the, the angry the anger comes from. It's not like we wake up and we are let me be angry. I mean, but let's let's talk about it, right? Because you know, you have people that are like, you know, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go right back to it. Joe, you like, it's like, you know, Joe, what has Joe Biden done for black people, right? And I actually figured it out, too. I got an answer to that. But what has okay. Joe Biden done for uh, black people? You know, he, he signed a law, you know, for trans people. He signed a law for Asian people, right? And I'm just like, bro, like, you know, before, like, you could join the military just because of you who you are. Before he, instituted, like, you couldn't join the military if you was trans. Like, that, you, you had that right already. And you complaining about something that you already have for someone who literally it got taken away, right? And and they passed the um, an anti-trans bill in uh, I believe it's in Arkansas, right? And 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 they were just talking about like how like the number of suicides that happened since then, Ooh. right? And so we're not just mad because we're getting pulled over. We're mad because there's literally systems in place that treat us differently i remember when i was uh coming from dominican republic uh from my uh because i have i have family members that have property in dr my okay. wife has property in dr my my media family has property in dr and on our way there you know we didn't we, we went through normal airport but on our way back they put us through like the if you know what i'm talking about it's like the i don't even know how to describe it man but it's the part that they go through when they're trying to check in people from different countries. You know what I mean? Please give me the name for it. Yeah. Tell me your story. Yeah. So literally, we go through this tunnel. So we go through this tunnel, and it's like a, it's like a narrow tunnel. I've never seen this before, ever in a, like an airport before, but it's literally on the underground, whatever. We go through the tunnel. We, we take like seven turns, and then we come around. And they start checking us in. They got all these dogs just sniffing people, right? And, you know, as an American, I'm just like, like, I felt like violated. Like, the fuck? Like, y'all don't treat us like this? No, like, why is, you know? But it's just like that, too. Like, I, like, I just was like, wow. Like, you know, those, those tunnels, they were designed for people who are trying to escape the country like uh, dissidents or politicians when they, was the, uh, they also had, uh, what's the name? A dictatorship. Mm. Um, so when people was trying to escape, you will go through the tunnel and you will never be seen again. Because that happens also in Haiti. They have a, a similar tunnel. My, my uncle told me about it. And during the dictatorship, people was flying. He said, like, a lot of times people was going through the tunnel and then they will never go on board the, the flight. So those tunnels, um, they were used for that purpose. Like, you just don't see life again. You just, like, go to jail directly or something. Yeah. There. And it's so funny because I was in Dominican Republic as well. I was there for work. And then I was flying and I met a um, uh, Dominican woman. She was like white Dominican. I was flying close with her. Like we just happened to be on the same flight and yeah. we met a long time ago. And then they took my bag, I checked, but they didn't put the, the sticker. They put the sticker for her, they didn't put it for me. Mm. Two minutes before like going to board, they called me and they said like, no, you don't have the sticker. And I'm like, how you knew? They pulled me back and they said like, oh, there are rest of cocaine here. Like it was like giving like cocaine or like drugs. And I'm like, what are you talking about? I'm telling you, I felt like, I was like, 
are they putting something on my back? And they're just trying to like, to frame me or something? Then they check again, they check again. And I was like, look, I don't know what is happening. And then they let me go randomly. But I'm like, this didn't happen to anybody who was white. And most, most were white Dominicans. Yeah. The same thing happened to me when I was flying to Bali. Um, I was wearing braids, mm. way longer than yours. And then they were like going through my braids and checking all. It didn't happen to anybody else. And they check on me in every airport. And I noticed that because sometimes I travel with friends who are, they happen when we are like all black, we are all going through. Yo, you see the whole flight going through one direction and you are pulling the other one. You are like, yeah. yo, this could be too obvious. And That's it happens all the time. And then they still kind of be angry. But you have to. Right. It happens because they can do it. Exactly. Because it's in law. And that is why people need to, you know, vote and understand like laws and stuff because they can do that stuff because they can do it because they wrote it and then they made it into law. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. even what they're doing with these voter suppression laws. Because, because we are not protected. Exactly. We are never going to be uncomfortable. And because it's such a thin line between what you can do and you can't, that they do that all the time. And that thin line becomes more and more blurry. And until you don't see how other people are being treated, you don't understand that you are being mistreated yep. because that is that happens to you all the time. And I'm I'm lucky that I live in Europe, but when I see a lot of interactions happening in the US, sometimes I'm like, wow. And then here as well, they treat you bad, but you cannot call it out. Because no one, there is no an ally saying like, no, you're right. being right. It right. has to be someone from the same group. It cannot be us. Our voice doesn't have that power. It has to be a system. It has to be like a, because that's how racism works, right? It's, and that's, that's the big confusion people get about critical race theory. They take it personal, right? It's like me, me, me. But it's like, we're not even talking about you, bro. Like, yeah, you, you know, you're probably racist, but okay. We're talking about the people that are making these laws that's making it harder for people to vote, right? And therefore, yeah. you continue to think that just because I don't have an ID, because they'll be like, oh, why, why, you know, they can just get an ID, right? But it's like, just like the privilege, I didn't even know they had tunnels. You didn't even know that people didn't have IDs because in your world, everyone has an ID. And that is the problem, right? You don't, you, you can't decenter yourself. Yeah, you know? yeah. And also, um, seeing what is happening right now in the U.S., maybe, you know, I, I get a lot of news from Instagram. I follow a lot of, like, in, um, news, you know, that they have on Instagram. Yeah. Around. So, and the ones I select, I select the ones that I believe that they're important and relevant for me. When I see all these bills trying to be passed about, like, preventing vote, or like execution, execution with like ripples. Yeah. It's so disturbing. It's so disturbing and really scary that the higher power <laughs> that in the country cannot control those bills. That is hard. That 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 is very disturbing. Of like, yo, they are very serious. They don't care about being called racist. Yeah. yeah. It's, like, it's like they're trying to grab control no matter what. You know? It looks like desperation at this point. It looks like really like, yo, know, we're going hard because if we don't play this ball, we're losing. Yeah, it's white rage. Yeah, it's white rage. And, that, and that's historical, right? That's nothing that's new. Um, but... And, but again, that they do it because they can, right? State laws versus governmental law, like they, like, and they, like you can't, you can't infringe upon state what the state wants, right? But because those Republican-run states, those governments are majority Republican, you understand what I mean? 
They have the power to do it. Therefore, they do it. Obviously, they're fascists. Obviously, they're racist, right? But that's why we, we got to pass the, you know, the People's Act. That's why, you know, that's that it gets. But they're doing it because they're losing power, right? Because people, yeah. you know, people are recognizing that they're not, they're not the party for people at all. Um, people um, are you can, you can, yeah, you can tell that because you see desperation. You see, like, you know, we have to do something. We have to prevent this to continue growing. Um, they feel threatened. Their power threatened. It's not about like their life. Yeah. It's not about survival. It's their power, power. threatened. It's yeah. not even like financial. It is really in their mindset, like what they have created the world that it should look. Yeah. It, it's threatened. It's just it's so scary. So scary. Um, yeah, but we gonna get through it. It is scary. <laughs> it is scary. Yeah. We gonna we gonna get through it because yeah. I mean that's all, we, that's all we do, right? And mm -hmm. I think a, a good thing about what you said about we have to make sure we look in the mirror, you know, and make sure that we're not being hypocritical, and we just you know live through that. And so the last chapter he talks about the N word, and then the the it's real easy. Nope. <laughs> but the first thing that I noticed, he said, like, it's coming from a Latin word, and then um, it was taken by a British. Like, no, 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 again. <laughs> to like this created, no. Portuguese and Spaniards, they use the word negro, which means black. Yeah. Portuguese and Spaniards, they were the, the first one that had interaction with Africans, that they were being labeled as black. So it's not British, and it's definitely not American. American didn't exist, you know, the, yeah. as the ones that we understand now. So again, I think that has been written somewhere, that it was created, and people continually like, repeating the same thing, but you just have to look logically. Who brought the first black people to the continent was the Portuguese and the Spaniards, then followed by the French, then uh, the uh, British, and then you go all that. Yeah. America was the last, the last part of the continent that was funded. It was the Caribbean first, then they started Latin America, and it's, they, go, they went up to North America. The word negro was used all this time. Uh -huh. So don't be, I don't, they, they need to understand this is the racial, and, and that is why it's so important to put it in perspective. The, ra the racial um, relationship between black people and like European existed before America. Yeah. This is not, this is not an American problem only. Yeah. yeah. Put it this way. Um, I just wanted to clarify that because every time that I see it written, I'm like, no, 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 no. no. Uh, yeah, I appreciate the uh, historical context and the uh, correction. We definitely, um, I appreciate so it. Yeah, about the word, do you use it? Do yeah. You don't use it. Do you use it? Yeah, I use it. Um, but you know, it's it's something that I just grew up you know, saying it, you know, with my people, right? Um, but again, I'm going I'm to I'm I'm um, I'm gonna take what Tamika Mallory said. She was like, you know, we're the only culture that, I never say we're the only culture that does this, but I feel like we do it too much where it becomes poison, where we take adversity and we make it something positive. We do that yes. so much. I feel like that can be very detrimental. Even we, we do that in hip hop, right? We take a lot of our trauma and we put it in music right um which is fine but that doesn't that doesn't that's not the end all be all and i think education is important i think that's what he's trying to say here like it, like just don't say it right just just don't yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's not for you it's not it doesn't have to be for you but kind of say it it's the same thing like between women we can call each other bitch yeah but then don't dare to use that term. At least we are in the same 
you know, in the same community, in the same group, uh, I feel close enough for you to call me that way and it's okay. Yeah. But if you are an outsider, that word doesn't belong to you. And it's on that. We don't, it's n nothing more to discuss. But I think obviously hip hop uses that word because the songs are coming from, you know, from like a very, um, it's just it's a common word used. Like okay. you are not going to change it. It's you cannot code switch when you are like, you know, rocking. But I think it's the white kids that they are listening to these songs that they really need to understand that word. You cannot say it, you don't say it, you mute yourself during the songs. Because I remember, uh, and he mentioned like um, the, the story of OJ. Yeah, with Was Jay -Z. Yeah, Jay -Z. And you see the prices of like Jay Z concerts, they are very expensive now. Yeah. So if you go to that concert, a lot of them, you see more white people than black people. And I always imagine, like, if I go to that concert, I want to see everybody shot. <laughs> I really want to see them because I'm going to be like, what are you doing? And it's, going, it's going to be a problem. I w I'm going to choose to act on it because I'm like, what are you doing? Yeah. Again, again, what he said, don't say it. Just don't say it. <laughs> Why do you think that that word exists? That's not for you. It's not for you. It's not for you. If you know, you know. If you don't know, don't worry about it. If you know, you know. I mean, but I think... Go ahead. Go ahead. You go ahead. No, I mean, I think, again, it's all about respect, right? And it's all about, like, knowing when you don't know and not overstepping yourself. You know, people, people I feel that do that are trying to be cool or trying to be accepted, right? And it's like, you don't have to say something to be accepted. Just be yourself. You yeah. Know? Don't be authentic. You understand what I mean? And that's, that's the thing about hip hop culture. It's about being authentic, you know? And, you know, it's... It, it is what it is. Know, but I have seen people that they have a white friend and among them they use the word and the white friend uses too and every time i have been there i look at them like don't dare to choose it on me you know that's real though. This, they do understand if, you know for a white person who has like, the whole group of friends are black and it, it must be difficult to choose like especially to young people like, can I say it? Can I not say it? But all my friends, they use it. I feel like an outsider. It must be a lot going through their mind. So I'm not going to forbid that person to use it within their friends because that is for their friends to feel comfortable or not. Yeah. But um, yeah, so it's you, the content. Yeah, exactly. Because you have, you know, you have black people that use the N word, but they would never use it if there's no black people around, you understand what I mean? Like you have black people that don't like other black people that use the N word when white people are around, right? But then you have yeah. white people who hear it, but then they're like, you know, I get it. You know, like it's not, I'm not trying to be something I'm not, but this is y'all, you know, I'm not gonna, I don't want y'all to police yourselves too, you know?